Yeah, yeah. Our, our rounds are normally accompanied by eat shit, you piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, our declaration of war comes from uh, the unfortunately shift in paradigm for war making capabilities because of, because of the change what we understand to be war. Typically, war is waged between nation states. The affirmative changes that paradigm uh, and changes all of it, breaking down uh, realism when war making. Our affirmative would literally break down the ability for us to wage war because we no longer understand what it means to wage war. Because typically, war means uh, fighting between two nation states, but our affirmative would change that in the long term. The second argument is that the politics of the affirmative was it uses a radical, complete over identification. This allows us to expose the operation of the death drive in our relationship with realism and confront our desire to overcome instability. Engaging in politics of instability with so much baggage disturbs the fundamental fantasy. Specifically, whenever we engage in a politic that breaks down our ability to uh, confront war. The third argument is that over identification to start, uh, actually, what do you mean? The next argument is our interrogation of uh, how the fantasy of realism within politics allows us to untie the ideological knot. Specifically, uh, specifically the, synth the symptom is that which uh, ties together the entirety of the ideology, or in this case, the idea that we can wage uh, war for needless reasons and uh, wage war because we have this, uh, uh, this problem with insecurity, but the uh, the problem is that when, when, when the, the problem is that in the attempt to alleviate this insecurity, we only create more uh, insecurity in the long term, creates an endless cycle of error replication that only our uh, over identification can solve. The next argument is that over identification disturbs the fundamental fantasy that exposes the obscenity of an extreme of an ideology that exposes its absurdity. Specifically, the avant garde movement in Russia in the 1930s, the artist painted uh, in response to Leninist industrialization, the artist painted uh, their subjects as being radically involved with their machinery, which created an ideological understanding of what Leninist uh, uh, industrial industrialization was doing to the work to the to the proletariat and ultimately created a shift away from the industrialization that would that would have been harmful. The uh, fifth argument is that uh, that recognition of, uh, recognition of the absurdity of modern politics abolishes some, uh, 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 abolishes the source of our desires, that uh, we only hope within that, and this is the only hope we have to break away, that we have a choice in how we confront uh, unethical systems of realism. That is a question of whether or not we confront the unethical nature of uh, realism, or if we continue to operate in the same type of ideology. Our argument is that we should push this type of ideology to the logical, to its logical extreme in order to expose the way that it orders and structures our everyday is in order to expose the way that it is what is the ultimate internally to all acts of violence. The sixth argument is that our radical call is more than just a call against the state, but it becomes a universal, a universal call to expose the violence of the international order. Specifically, uh, Mohammed Bouazizi was the Tunisian street vendor that set himself on fire, and uh, that set himself on fire that gave rise to the and, uh, that gave rise to the entire Islam uh, to the uh, to the entire Islamic revolution throughout Africa and the Middle East. An indication that uh, whenever you take one smaller action, it gives rise to a uh, larger questioning of normative structures that uh, can create entire uh, can create an entire revolution and an entire uh, attempt to restructure what we understand to be power. Could be well off in the case. Is it a criticism? Yes. It is. Well, I'll, I'll generate more things on, on the app. 
So uh, nothing basically, specific in the shell. Basically, uh, like the thrust of our argument is that these, this over identification is exactly what caused the pinpointing of native bodies to be exterminated, a la the Carolina. I don't people. understand how, though. Yeah, well, I'll get to that. Cool. The impacts. The first impact argument is the epistemological, the epistemological, epistemological genocide leads to no value to life. Well, Andrew here that settler colonialism forces the leveling down of knowledge production to fit within a bound state parameters of hegemonic understanding. Little Andrew here that Nepe, a Maori leader, makes this law specific. Quote, Maori knowledge is the body of knowledge uh, articulated by experience through history, but through the history of Maori people. Thus, the elimination of this knowledge is profound undergoing and stripping of the system that value uh, of the value of native bodies. The second argument is that exceptionalism. Little Andrew here is that moral supremacy enables a limited United United States intervention abroad, including the military military ventures in both Iraq and Afghanistan, which have killed thousands of civilians and wrecked livelihood, uh, uh, wrecked livelihoods of many more, but also the expansion of political and, uh, the, and political and economic powers of the West, locking millions of people to abject poverty. The key is that settler colonialism underpins a broad, complete global, global domination. So you begin to address settler colonialism, you're never going to address the way the United uh, the, 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 the way the United States will, uh, relates to global domination. The third uh, impact earth is logical extermination. The land here is forgetting the genocide of its first people alive, the origi uh, originary of uh, uh, derealizations of the other. Let me up here that derealizations of, uh, of the other means that is neither dead or alive, but it is spectral, never to be located by the state is ever important. Let me see over here that in the United States, in the, uh, uh, the Indian is the original combatant who couldn't even possibly be grieved. Let me see over here this inevitably turns the case one because we can't identify anybody to actually be grieved. You can never begin to reflexively like understand. On the alt, though negative to interrogate settlerism, recognize the history of violence committed on this land and endorse indigenous sovereignties. Yeah. Though negative, yeah, though negative to interrogate, I have one, interrogate settlerism, recognize the histories of violence committed on this land and endorse indigenous sovereignties. Solidity. The first solvency argument that settler ideology permeates and filters every political and ethical function of the status of the very land which we um, which we speak is foreclosed from, col uh, from the colonized creating the power uh, knowledge production, the affirm uh, the affirmative sovereign, uh, the affirmative solvency uh, like concerning the indigenous is key. Second argument is that your priority um, in this debate uh, in this debate should be decolonization, a process of continual upheaval that shapes the foundations of settler colonialism. The third argument is the alternative starting point for understanding the roots of settler colonialism, not just in the United States, but in around the world. The fourth argument that we solve all of the harms of your act, your impacts are causally linked to the settler state. If we destroy that state, then we destroy the terminal impacts of the act. On the act proper. The first argument that makes that over identification is good. The first argument that I want to respond to is that over identification is inevitably bad. This would allow the United States to pinpoint the specific Indian specific tribe and settle them to Carlisle and against them and transform them into assimilation. When we get to identify specifically exactly what is and what is not bad about the native and Body. This is exactly what uh, what forced them to strip them of their culture, uh, culture in the first place. What we have here is that over identification led to the spectacle of the Indian. You close to the 1900 Chicago World Fair as an example when we literally put native bodies on display as a spectacle to be marveled at. This was because of the over over identification, over identification of the native body, which inevitably led to the logic of the extermin uh, extermination of the native when we put them as a spectacle and nothing more than a spectacle. Then they, they no longer become a body to actually be that. Uh, um, I also want the link that I also want the other link that you say that uh, you say literally quote we don't engage in war uh, we don't engage in war uh, uh, against other uh, what was that link that you said? Uh, never mind. Uh, you pretty much summed it up. Okay. The um, uh, the uh, other argument uh, the other argument I want is that you never identify the way that we wage war within the nation. You never see the way the real uh, the way the realism operates within the nation. Realism led uh, we, we 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 say that this prioritization that's the key to understanding the way the realism function because the first instantiation of a military body in the United States was one that was specifically used to kill and exterminate the native body. This probably means that we are the prior cause to any of the impacts that you talk about. On the advantage one, like proper, just line by line going down. Um, I'm sorry, where? I was just like generating like sound just going like straight down. Sorry. Um, uh, the first argument that you, that you make this this never leads to radical radical shift because the AU, uh, AUMF grants us but doesn't uh, just grant it to which war on terror script the first argument I want is that what are we doing with the war on terror then? This is the exact same rhetoric that the United States have been, uh, have been CSU since, since 9 11. Uh, since 9 11. This is no radical shift. This is exactly the status quo. We are already waging war on terror. We are already, we're already engaging in, in, in war on terror. You are simply a further instantiation of the status quo. In fact, you, you do nothing to actually begin to uh, radically uh, sh shift the way that shift the way the real uh, you, you do nothing to radically shift. Just waging war on another marginalized group. We tell you that until you 
body falls outside of the bed and falls outside the dread death right means you can never solve or the name for the need body means we don't even go we, we don't view them as humans to begin with means that there is no death right for the need body because they're already inherently expendable the measure of the need is that ethics are impossible and more that I, you say that ethics are impossible uh, because of like rhetoric like prior dying you don't actually view realism as important we say that the prior that the root cause of realism is that the settler colonialism we tell you that because we began to view the native as the other as something to be exterminated as something not worthy, not, not worthy. We have to begin to securitize against the uh, against the native. That's why we need the march on the trail, tra uh, trail tears across the uh, across, uh, across the country. Furthermore, I want you to uh, you say that you are radical call to expose the violence of the internal order. Oh, okay. Okay, order's gonna be uh, the half. Bringing stuff on top and then advance on the line. Um, then I'm going to go uh, down the camera. Okay, cool. The first argument is going to be an extension of the rule of health. I can see that the rule of health is going to be. Uh, to endorse the team that best breaks down realism. Again, the role of balance to endorse the team that best breaks down realism. They can see the three more coming out of this, but the, the one that's going to across here is number three, indicating that uh, our relationship to realism is going to be the central question of the debate because one of the four times we've grown up with a system of macro politics was probably going to, hmm? Oh, yeah, sorry. It's going to inform uh, our system of macro politics, which is probably going to be a key interlinking to how they actually want to address settler colonialism. But two, it, uh, it, it is an indicator of how we operate within the debate space because the debate space is going to be inherently like a realist and like macro political, so we need to understand how we relate these ideas of real concepts. Before we can even engage in the debate space in the first place, the argument goes, well, see this, so you're always going to be evaluating them around through the, the team that best in the world, like best in the world. Evaluating around through who best breaks down the list. Yeah. All right. So, now on the case on one. The first look argument to make is that going to be uh, over identification is bad. However, they're taking our understanding, uh, they're taking their understanding of over identification as being literal, as like literally over identifying as something. However, they're ignoring that nuance coming out of the PMC. The PMC indicates that we should take a problematic ideology and it stretch to its logical extremes. That's going to come out of the. Uh, uh, yeah, that was going to be the C number three, number four, indicating that we ought to take these problematic ideologies and expose them for their absurdity in the first place. We're not literally putting on the hats of policymakers and going to war with ISIS, but rather we are talking about how uh, going to war with ISIS is a problematic ideology and it is a radical shift away from what we were doing in the first place. So uh, then they do some analysis about how we like use our identification to pinpoint specific Indians and like strip them of their culture. However, there's not enough analysis done uh, on this argument for you to actually vote for it. There's no more as to why our specific instance of over identification is going to strip the culture of the native people. And then they indicate that, uh, like, we, we over-identify with the native body and that was problematic. So this is not an application of over-identification of the native body. We don't actually do that with any affirmative advocacy. So maybe their instance of over the application of over-identification would be bad, but that's not specific PMC advocacy, so you're not going to vote on that argument. The second argument they make is going to be that uh, realism um, is used by the nation to, like, kill more native bodies. We're not advocating for realism. We're advocating for a breakdown of realism. Realism is simply a paradigm of how we understand the relationship between two states, understanding that they are going to, or like realism would indicate that they're going to be the highest actors within this paradigm, that there is an analytical state of power relations. We indicate that we ought to be breaking down realism because it is the problematic paradigm to view relations. The uh, next argument is that, uh, like, the war on terror in case that this isn't a radical shift. Time, the war on terror is not a formal war. This is going to be the problematic point of their analysis. The war on terror is simply a PR campaign to justify the attention of the military state against uh, non state actors. However, what the affirmative is doing is literally, formally, congressionally declaring war on ISIS a non-state act. That is, un that is unprecedented. It's literally never been done before because it's unconstitutional, it's unlawful. So that's why the affirmative is doing this. Like, literally declaring war on an unstate actor is something that we've never done before. We can't declare war on, like, it, it also breaks down our ability to understand what war is. It, break, it breaks down our ability to understand what war is because war is traditionally understood as a realist concept of two states going to war with each other against territory or resources or like some sort of human rights violation or whatever. But we're going to war against an entity that does not exist in a realist concept. So that is literally how we are breaking down realism is by destroying the tenet, the one of the central tenets of realism, which is war. The next argument they make is that uh, this this type of uh, like going to war against ISIS is what causes us to view other nations as savage, but 
one, there's not enough analysis here for you to actually run this argument. It really doesn't make sense within the context of PMC. But the second argument is that we're going to argue that any form of causal relationship with realism is the, the thing that allows us to view other nations as savage. Whenever we view the, uh, whenever we view the world, uh, world of contemporary international relations through the lens of realism, we look at other states as being independent and not having any sort of hierarchical body of organization above us, which would allow us to have any sort of view against these nations that we want. The thing is here is the PMC is breaking down our standard realism. We're not viewing all of these other like entities as uh, other states. We're uh, like breaking down those concepts. The next argument they make is that the native body exists outside the death drive. However, this psychologically doesn't make sense. The death drive is an inherent psychological drive that all human beings experience because we all have the desire to uh, control our own return to the inorganic state. So they don't uh, they don't uh, circumvent our impacts in our idea. They have a fundamental misunderstanding of what the death drive is. Yeah. Uh, so, given that new contextualization of the death drive, can you just like link that to the Gatsby advocacy for me? Uh, sure. What do you guys? Yeah, sorry. It's... So you say that the death drive is like our inherent desire to like return to organic matter, whatever we choose. Like what? Like what offense is that? You just explained it. Just scratch that argument. Just make okay. that argument that yeah. the death drive is what justified the things like the trail of tears in the first place because of our desire to overcome instability that native bodies presented. Okay, sure. So the death drive. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah. So whatever. Native body exists outside the death drive. The argument we're going to go here, though, is uh, the ethics are impossible under a improper relation to the death drive. Though, and the reason, the argument they make against this here is that the root cause of settler colonialism. However, they have a misunderstanding of how international relations work between two states. Settler colonialism is just a, a result of a problematic relationship to realism. Settler colonialism would indicate that whenever we have one state that is more powerful than the other, we have the ability to exert our autonomy and sovereignty over that other state. That is a result of realism. So when we break down our relationship with realism, we are breaking down the paradigm that allows for settler colonialism to exist in the first place. Um, now I'm okay. So go to the framework. They say we can't pass a plan on solar land. We don't pass a plan. We don't we don't depend post on implementation of the plan. This is just an in-round advocacy, and uh, they don't provide a counter-roll about, so you're always going to provide an in-round to our roll about, which means you all about that, because they don't provide any sort of instance where they break down realism. So that's like an automatic half vote right there. The next argument is that uh, they, 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 they read a lot of links. We're going to group their four links together, because all of them are predicated off of the, 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 the they're all predicated off of the idea that we are passing some sort of post fiat government implemented plan in which we actually deploy military troops to Syria. We're not doing that. We're declaring war against ISIS. I don't think Syria was in our plan text. Um, so they didn't read the Calgary framework, so I don't want to do that coming out of the ML. Um, yeah, so we don't link really, really hard. Also, uh, the next argument that was going to be a link turn, they indicate that global domination is justified because we view the other as backward. The PNC indicates that we are backward. We indicate that the policies and the, the, the institutions of the United States and the current military industrial complex are the things that are backward in the first place, and that's why we ought to make a radical shift away from those things. We don't mention Syrians in our PMC. We don't mention that they're backwards or savages or anything like that. We are a cold link turn to this criticism because we are indicating that we are the ones who are backwards and we are the ones who need to be fit. Uh, white people. So they um, say that we link because we're here, so are they. Yeah, they're also here. Um, so they link to. Now on the impact part, uh, arguments. The first is going to be, they make this uh, epistemological argument about how settler colonialism is like a, a destruction of a certain body of knowledge. However, uh, insofar as we are a radical shift away from contemporary notions of how states interact with each other, we are the only, uh, the, we are going to be a, a, a key prerequisite to uh, having a new understanding of uh, like, uh, epistemology because we have to break down the system of which that structures how uh, 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 epis uh, what is it? Uh, epistemic beliefs, uh, we are a breakdown of how epistemic beliefs are created in the first place. Because the state is the uh, organizer, or the uh, the uh, the, it, the state is the body that determines what e e e epistemolo e epistemology. epistemologies are acceptable or not. We are breaking down that structure. We are opening up a new space for individuals for, uh, to advocate for new radical e epistemologies that are not specifically indicated within the status quo. The second argument is that we uh, like are a project of global domination through this conceptualization of civil colonialism. The absolute back to that. In a post fiat sense, we literally deconstruct the state because it wouldn't make any sense anymore. And it, it can't function in a post fiat sense. But in the pre fiat sense, we are a radical shift away from the uh, like current, current uh, military adventures and project of global domination. So we saw back to the impact scenarios. There's no way for them to have generated any offense on this criticism. Now on the alternative page, um, perm, do both, perm, do the app and all non competitive parts of the alternative. I don't see why there's any indication coming out of the LOC why we can't interrogate the, uh, like, interrogate federal colonialism and history of violence and sovereignty uh, because we are not mutually exclusive with this idea. Um, they specifically say that uh, we sh our priority should be decol decolonization. That is a result of the uh, affirmative advocacy. So you're all going to end up voting that. Discuss it. The first is on the all-time spot and then straight down. 
what this building was created is. Like we say that with it, well, we say that your lack, yeah, your lack of interrogation, uh, your lack of interrogation, that still results in Additionally, you say, well, you say, like, turn the PMC indicates that they that they are backward. However, we say that you are not mentioning. Uh, uh, we say that you not mentioning Syrians is probably a disadvantage. To that right? Like we say that we need to elevate the bodies that have been continuously destroyed rather than keeping on the spotlight on the people who have destroyed them. That is not a winter. Um, additionally, I send our uh, second link to tell you a lot of liberal humanism all the rules in a uh, lots of subjectivity, right? Like this, this idea that your uh, words and uh, the, 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 uh, framing, uh, the, the framing this rhetorical shift in the context of the state is actually going to do anything is exactly our, 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 our link number two, right? Like we tell you that always results in a loss of subjectivity because we are not elevating the bodies that deserve to be elevated, but rather saying that we should have the state use a, slight, a slightly different wording of the same thing that they've always done is we're not uh, focusing on what people we need to focus on. Additionally, Senator Arlington, number three, we tell you that, uh, that, that uh, before the mobilization of the, uh, the settler state, we articulate that even if you do not defend the you have defended the uh, words that you utilize. We say the words that you, you, that, that they utilize matter, and we say that you are asserting a type of savagery unto others because you are saying that some people uh, can uh, 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 can or be destroyed. Yeah. What words do we use at a certain type of street context? We say that your plan text is to engage in war with a particular type of body. We say that even if you don't defend a fiat implementation of that, that performance is enough to burn our civil Also, not talking about Syrians as violence in itself. Yeah, also not talking about Syrians as violence in itself. Um, I said earlier number four, we tell you that Syria was, uh, the, 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 the state trust Syria as an Indian country that probably is, uh, an independent just have the methodology they've heard as well, because means they're never going to be able to use your thousand settler colonial mindset insofar as they use the state. Um, anything else you want? No. Okay, all of the dropped links are reasons why the firm doesn't function. Additionally, any low risk of a link at 100% conceded all 12 seeding to just be very negative, uh, but the impacts. Um, you say that you're key correct to understanding new epistemology because the, because the state frames what uh, bodies are, uh, what the bodies are and are not epistemo uh, epistemo epistemologically viable. We say that that is probably true. However, we uh, however we, uh, yeah, I already explained to you why like that it started with settler colonialism. Additionally, you made this distinction between post and pre fiat. You make this argument about how post fiat would like, result in the logical deconstruction of the state. Um, well, you're not post fiat, but so don't let them get any uh, offense off of that. But additionally, we say that post fiat would not result in the deconstruction of the state, right? Because the state has engaged with what they with what they have called war in the past before, right? And the state was not deconstructed by that. That means that we would just do the same thing that we have historically done and uh, nothing would actually happen. So, it's not our first uh, impact. We tell you that the epistemological genocide leads to no value life means you would never be able to, uh, to uh, you would never be able to uh, engage with the affirmative in the first place because you have no idea what any of their impacts in the world with no value life. Additionally, it's under a uh, second impact. We tell you this always leads to exceptionalism. That means that this is always going to turn that case because in a world where you not engage with settler uh, colonial state, that means that you're always going to uh, result in military veterans that are absolutely going to uh, red livelihoods, uh, they drop in this terms case, it means that they're not accessing any of their impacts. Additionally, to number, uh, our number three point, we tell you this leads to logical extermination and uh, the point where you, if you de -realize, de realize the other, that means they're always going to be spectral, right? Like, that's why there is not a discussion of Syrian bodies in the PMC, because they are the spectral bodies that don't actually matter in context of whether or not the state is orienting itself properly to the death drive. We tell you that the state is not orienting itself properly to the death drive, and also that the state is always going to be violent because it was founded on settler colonialism. Uh, but yeah, drop all solvency, plus uh, a terms case argument means you just to go to